Hello, a very good evening to you. Welcome to Delhi once again for more terrific action from the Commonwealth Games, the Lawn Bowl section obviously, and tonight a great match in prospect. It's the gold medal match in the men's pairs between South Africa and England. That's our feature match this evening here on Green 2 at the Sports Complex of the JN Stadium, just around the corner from the main athletic stadium. It's been another wonderful day here, and it's a lovely evening too, we have to say. Conditions just about perfect. And look at that, isn't that a beautiful shot? That's the sort of visibility we've got here tonight. Temperature just below the 30 degree centigrade mark. Humidity acceptable at less than 30% and just a gentle breeze. So it's a, it's a lovely night. It's very clear. We've had a lovely day too, to be honest. The sun was, if anything, too strong. But it's been another beautiful day and we've seen some wonderful lawn bowls played under a very, very hot sun in difficult conditions for all the players. That's lovely. You see the movement of the moon there. It's incredible, isn't it? All the way from Delhi. Well done, the camera boys, for that. That's lovely. Well, there's the uh, stadium in the background there. You can see in the distance, but more immediately, of course, we're focusing on uh, South Africa against Scotland uh, and South Africa. Uh, South Africa against England, but South Africa beat Scotland to progress through Malaysia and England. It was England who came out on top, so our final is South Africa, England, and it's a great match in prospect. That's the route to the final. And that's how we look. My name's David Bovin. Delighted to have you along with us tonight. I'm very pleased to have David Corkill alongside me, who's been providing expert uh, commentary throughout the whole thing. And uh, David, you know these uh, South African bowlers well. Indeed, you know the England boys well. So um, tell us a little bit about Jerry Baker and Sean Adlaw. Yeah, around a long, long time. Jerry Baker lives in Johannesburg. It's his fourth Commonwealth Games. Very, very good player, Jerry. Sean Animal hasn't got the same level of experience, but won a bronze in 2002 in Manchester. Stuart Airy, once again, a very experienced international indoors and outdoors. Stuart Airy, he's been at playing the television events back home over a period of some 20 years. Mervyn King, four years ago, world indoor professional singles champion. Been recognised as one of the top players for the last two decades, indoors and outdoors. So we've got a lot of talent on show here tonight. It's a very warm evening, as we've seen and heard already, and this is going to be a fascinating match. We've seen some great stuff already. We've actually seen the England pair several times on our road to, through to this final. Haven't been quite so lucky, seen so much of the South Africans, but nevertheless, we're looking forward to the... Uh, clash between these two great sporting rivals and a decent crowd in tonight to come and watch the action lovely to see some of the beautiful clothes on parade it's a lovely evening and uh, lots of interest here in Delhi in this particular event the lawn bowls and uh, as we're approaching the final stages of the competition a bigger crowd all the time we've had an interesting day today His Royal Highness Prince Edward was here today Lord Coe was here Seb Coe was here also just taking a look around and uh, watching what happens at the lawn bowl so Good that he could spare time from the Olympic bid or the Olympic uh, achievement. Of course, he's the uh, boss of the whole Olympic project, the organizer, and he's here to see what happens. So, uh, still a lot of organizing, not as much as they had in Delhi, of course, in the rush to get everything ready. But Sebko was a welcome visitor here, along with his Royal Highness. So, that and the press and the media that go with a royal visit, of course, and Sebko's entourage as well. And there's the signal for play to get underway, so we're just about ready to start. This should be absorbing stuff, hard one to call, and David and I will take you through a of lawn bolts. So the jack is cast by Sean. Jerry Baker, slight straightening of it. It's been a very good game so far for South Africa. They lifted the women's, the women's triples, and now they're in the men's final of pairs. About all these is that the schedule's pretty demanding. There isn't much spare time for these players, and often they can find themselves in action straight away after they've been in action before. And it's pretty punishing in this heat and humidity. It can be, but they're relatively short games, and uh, you just have to take care of yourself. That's all. You, know, you can't dismiss the fact that it's 35 degrees most days. and depends on your schedule. You might get 
you might get an evening match. Sometimes you get two games in one day. But they are the maximum really we expect this game to take. We'll be getting on for three hours. And, and this is the start of the bid for the gold medal. Let's see, the hard bit, the three hours. There's no time limit on the final, of course. It can take a lot longer than that. But three bowl pairs over sets of nine ends in the first two sets and a three end tie break has a tendency to focus a little bit of uh, the players' minds on the short length of the game. So, Murphy King trying to drop between the two balls. Rather miss it. Yes, he would rather miss that ball. And I always find it interesting, both sets of players have gone immediately onto the backhand away from the commentary box. And yet, towards the end of the game, you might find they'll move onto the forehand. The forehand is not a bad hand, I just think it's, uh, it's a little bit like Brown's cows. Where one goes, they all go. <laughs> Do well to hold this one up, Mervyn. It looks as if it's under to me. Yes. This uh, English pair are wonderfully self-effacing. They give away little uh, with facial expressions, but they're both brilliant players. And it's a great combination, isn't it? The steadiness of Merv King and the brilliance of Stuart Airy. And as I say, neither of them terribly giving away, if you like, what they're feeling inside. They hide it very well, and even if they're struggling, you'd never guess it from looking at Stuart. Well, exactly, exactly. Exa not very demonstrative. That's the thing. They don't show anything too much. They make the odd wee twitch here and there, whatever. They will obviously be different after it's all over. But, uh, the job. These are sort of to do a job. They're not here just to, to have the deli experience, so to speak. <laughs> you know, they're here for a reason. And, and that is to lift a medal. And, and if the um, high fives were to come, they come later on when they've been earned. They don't start yeah. off at that level because where is there to go when it starts to go wrong? The expectation is quite simple, and that is that you. The expectation is that you get on with it, that you provide a service and at a certain amount, at a certain amount of uh, pressure will be placed by your opponent. But you get on with your match, you get on with your game, and don't worry about the opponents. Take a bit of that, thank you. Picked out the right ball. Very much a matter of trying to reach into heads as well because that's the nature of their game. They keep arriving all the time. You would think they're playing great bowling greens. But actually, they're not that great, to be truthful with you. They're a little bit heavy, sometimes a bit rough. many complaints about the playing surface here. I mean, there were general remarks about the deadness of it, the soft I started, but haven't heard anything recently. And as everyone's pointed out, it's the same for every team. There are little variations here and there, plus the natural life that drops onto the playing surface, like locusts and things like that, and big moths. But overall, I think the general verdict's been a thumbs up. And why not? It's a brand new complex. Well. We got that checked out the first day with one of the greats, Robbie Dublins, of the sport. He's trying again here. He doesn't want to hit that one in. Well, that's unfortunate. I think he may have taken a shot off. Drawing for three. I think he's down. There we go. Line two, maybe even three shots. Drawing for four. Got that all wrong. Stuart Airy, I just got this mental picture of every match we've covered involving him in recent days. He just seems to save every end when they're in trouble. He pulls out. He's just got such an, a, a brilliant idea of how to play the game and how to save ends if they're in bother.
Hmm. He certainly is not keen on that. It's just the one. So a bit of a sloppy opening end, but one on the board. South Africa. He knew as soon as it left his hand, turns back, left the mat, no need to look at it. Well, they were fairly lucky to get away with just the one then, really. So that early point means that South Africa opened the scoring this first set. Acknowledgement there from Mervyn that um, he wasn't happy with that. Stuart caught his eye and I think they agreed. Okay, just forget it. And that's not bad. Bit of a loose start, bit of a nervy start from Irvin. Sean Adler, decent opening bowl. See if he can follow it up with something just as good, but it doesn't look like it. Still not happy, is he? Well, I said her, but oh, it's very unlike Mervyn. That is uh, very far away, or as we would say, back in Northern Ireland, not within the horse's guile of it, which means it is nowhere close enough. It's going away as well. Can Stuart Harry improve England's fortunes in this? What's his best bet here, David? Oh, it's just just get something close. Get you know, something David, close to you know, the chair. Oh. That's about the first time I've heard you say that. Yes, anyway, they're so far away. You know, it's just get something close. That's all. There's nothing to be said here, really, in terms of that. But. You know, it's early days for these players, it's a, it's a nervy situation. The final for a comp that might just take a few ends to settle down. That's all. That one's not helping because it's also slightly in the way. Give it a few ends and it'll get, it'll get going, it'll pick up pace and... There it is, just dropping short. Airy just put an extra two feet on it, that's all he needs. Got a chance with this one. Just pass it clean, that'll do. Oh, will it do? Well, it's not bad, second ball. Well, they're grateful for small mercies at the moment, aren't they? Well, they need to be. Well, Mervyn's three balls were poor, Stewart's first one. Fortunately, the opposition were equally as poor. Yeah. Good. 
definite chance for Stewart to do something dramatic here. Simple draw. You can afford to arrive at this a little bit because turning the ball out is good, turning the jacks even better. He's got good position. Now, yeah, come on, Stuart. Mm, see now how far he goes out first. It might be a shade wide. Looks like it's kicking off. It is. He wanted to be inside with that pace. Even more would have been good. Well, he's a bit puzzled by that. You can see by the way, the tilt of the head, just not quite reading it right. The shot wasn't quite right. And it wasn't very good. It was a SEN, to be honest with you. It wasn't great from either country's perspective. Of course, it's still wide open. Jerry Baker with a chance to just do something special. A shame because that was a, a scrappy old second end. The lollipop goes up, it's one for South Africa. And so it's now 2 0. One in the first, one in the second end, and after the two ends of nine in the first set, it's 2 0 to South Africa. Now this looks better. Third end, and uh, maybe England have found their range. Oh, that's a good response. Well, maybe this is just both teams suddenly finding their touch, and this is going to be a much better end. Just a bit of a couple of ends. Yeah, but, just uh, finding their way. No real damage being done. No, it's only a point at each, so it's only two-point deficit, but... Um, we just feel that uh, this could be getting, which is what we want. Well, this looks like it might just make it into the head as well for the split from ball under jacks. Also good. Oh, so close. Very attacking ball, very early. Sometimes a ball there way as the other ball's coming in. Not a big problem under the circumstances, it was getting there. Mm. And to happen is that to happen whenever you're allowing game. And uh, the opposition's got the last ball to play. <laughs> You drop away from it. That is not the best of moments for it to happen, though. No. <laughs> yes, well, it does happen occasionally, but very rarely. This looks heavier, and that's the trouble. Put too much more weight on, you won't get back. There Such it goes. a fine line, isn't it, between well, success and failure, as we yeah. said before. Look at the difference. It is. Having said that, look at the three balls you've got in there. Mervyn King back in action again. Very 
conventional grip of the ball, the claw grip. Easy delivery. And by turning around the back here, that's as far as he possibly can to the back ball. He just covered Jerry Baker, and I'm certain Jerry will have a go at this. He is an aggressive type player. Good ball, took it off the outside edge, onto the back one, that stunned it. It's a very clever ball with that sort of weight. Stuart will be after it to try and move the jack if he can. In a good place. Very attacking player. Even when he's lying the shot, Jerry has a tendency to reach in. Mm. Missed a chance, Stuart. One ball in there against four. Mm. Of the two pairs, the South Africans are playing marginally the better. Just a little bit. Which accounts for the difference in the scores. And the likely outcome at the end of this end. Oh, well. The ball fell down, but that's not going to make any difference. Another single. So, not spectacular, but it all helps, and the score mounts up. It's 3-0 now to South Africa after three ends. Three greens here, JN Sports Complex. There's another green just around the corner of our stand on your left-hand side. That's the number four. It is used every single day as well. But our two television rinks are on green one and green two. Good ball. Moving on to the backhand coming in this direction. Wasn't there. Well it was, but what's more important actually David, is the fact they've moved on to the backhand coming in this direction because most of the play has been on the forehand. I think this backhand's a more reliable hand to be truthful. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's another good ball Take from care. Mervyn. That looks good. This is better from Merv. He looks a bit happier now. Interesting thing is, although they lost the first three ends, they're still only three points behind, so yep. damage is absolute minimal. Yes, there's been a certain amount of damage limitation until I get into it. Keep the pace, Merv. Touch wide, it's on there, it's on there. Merton still a little bit under. Mm, it's not a bad place, but it would have been better if you'd have been on the high side of the jack rather than under it. She 
very good shot of where we're positioned in the commentary. To section F1. So we've got a beautiful view of what's going on in front of us. It'll touch. <laughs> well, he'll take it. Well, bold indeed. Now, Always in the area. A few headaches for England. It really was a lovely. Good end result. England players going into their tracksuits for the evening game. South Africa sticking with their shorts. We might hear a few cheers beside us as there's another match going on. Difficult to negotiate the front ball. He's under, doesn't want to get his own, careful. Mm. I oh, was a wee bit unlucky just to come underneath so clean. There was always a danger though of that happening. Mm. It makes it a little bit harder just to get to it with that front one. Mm. A little pursing of the lips and a little facial grimace. He's not a happy bunny. Derry always take a little while on the mat just to get himself absolutely right. Swings the arm a few times after that. Difficult shot, all because of the front position. His own ball is blocking the way in. The forehand, on the other hand, the best back is against, but uh, it looks a more open shot than the forehand. Might just be worth it. Nice, Jerry going to add another. He is. Got to play the forehand now. Got to, yep. Got it's the only way in. Well, he has the alternative is to drive the front ball onto the other three, but there's such a big distance it's between a hard them. Shot, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you have to do it absolutely solid. You know, it's no easier in the forehand in many ways, but they'll have a go at it. It's definitely worth it. And this could be um, potentially a bad news end for England, so Stuart, a bit more pressure. It's a delicate shot, this, because you're trying to judge the ball swinging back. Go too heavy, it'll never make an effort. But you know you have to reach. Mervyn's not saying an awful lot because it looks as if it's just on the high side. Yep. The weight wasn't bad for the draw. But just didn't get back in time. So this is going to be a costly end. It is. A little bit of work for that ball to do, but just too much in the end. Spare shot chance for Jerry Baker. So confirmation, three shots. 
and things looking a little bit different now for England. On now, out of the nine in the first set, and it's South Africa starting to look comfortable. Six nil in front. You know, sir. That's the first time they've really been caught out on the scoring, David, isn't it? They got away with it a little bit, but um, they haven't really done anything to show that they deserve to be in the lead. No. You know, it's uh, unlucky to be on the wrong side of a 6-0 scoreline, but having said that, they got out of trouble a couple of times, and the South Africans have, without a shadow of a doubt, settled more quickly. More adapted to the conditions and happier with the... State of the game. Maybe little flashes of brilliance every now and again, as you would expect from both teams, but ultimately it's all about consistent play. Keep plenty of balls in the head, and you've always got a chance. You see, this is what I'm struggling with a little bit here. Mervyn King so good when he puts one close they put another one beside it he drops four feet short in the second now that indicates to me that there's something not quite right out there with regards to the pace of the green are there slightly slow parts are there slightly um, more faster parts because very well he's got an extremely good memory for repeating exactly what he did with the first mm. ball this time well he's certainly better good punch on that one will help maybe two goals but any forehand and all those three balls will become a guard not really what he wants so Sean Adenal Good back. Oh, you find a gap, would you believe it? <laughs> Any touch would have been good. Just any edge would have been good. inside as it's inside you want to be either of those balls would be good oh yes that's the position you're looking for Ed's looking very very good for England could put them right back in it score wise him with a chance or is he going to find in the gap oh. <laughs> again would you believe it Two in a row, oh. straight through that tiny gap. I think he might have to use a little bit more weight, or a little bit narrower. Yeah, It's okay. Try it again, Jerry, you're so close. Yeah. True, eh? Let's make sure. was not too far away from his previous one we just pushed it out and I can understand why we've just gone through the gap I thought he might have used more weight to it because it's just difficult to get at yep Mervyn's starting to say look might be useful
for the ball. Trying to get inside to the back ball. Careful, careful. Okay, that's good. Looks better. Concern he was going to come inside, but pushing that in has narrowed the target a bit. I think Jerry will go for this. I really do. You know, the way that head's setting, you could wing off anything and get absolutely nothing out of it. Of course. I think he's going to give it the beans. Well, they get the big dog out of the bag. There's no reason why not. There you go. One, two, three, with a possible four. Yeah. Yes, the possible four. Could be a four. Well, there's a subtle shot available, and he's already tried it twice and missed. So when you've tried something twice and missed, it's very difficult to know where to go in terms of correcting. You're almost better just to try for a different type of shot. Well, he's on the backhand. Yeah, a shot. Going for the weight. Try and get the ball on the ball. He might wing one out, maybe even two. There it goes. Going through with it. But I think he's reduced it down to one. It's good play. It was a pretty um, hopeless situation and they've salvaged it. Damage limitation. So finally, England on the scoreboard. It's clever play from Jerry Baker, the South African skip. And he reduced a potential deficit of four to just one. I think he always knew that the ball Jack, it was just uh, if anything else did. But three to one is a good. So five ends of the nine gone. Six one now, South Africa lead England. So a little chat between the two South Africans. What they're going to do, they're going to bring the mat out a couple of metres, that's all. It's a good starter again. Sean well played. He's a very steady lead. He's definitely picking up his play. He's first set goes on. Mervyn yet again, not happy. Oh, shake the head by Mervyn. time on this direction when he's on form absolutely devastating sadly I played him when he was devastating on one night it's quite a damaging experience actually well you can see he's working very hard behind the scenes to sort it out the look on his face shows that he's analysing deeply what's happening and where it's going wrong before it's too late. Of course, I'm referring to Mervyn on the indoors. Uh, outdoors, he's still obviously an excellent player. But uh, as a singles player indoors, he can be so difficult to beat. Well, he's given this one a chance, but it's going to drop around. Yes, I played Mervyn some years ago in the late 80s and uh, made a bit of a mess out of me. 
one of those nights. It happens occasionally. And give myself if, my, I'm, if I'm that far away from the standard that's required at that time, then I was in a heap of trouble. I see Mervyn thinking about this. And I thought, well, I'll give it another while, see what happens. Went off to a match. Oh, there we go. The two boys with their gold medal triples winners. And uh, I met him again 18 months later and did exactly the same thing to him. Well, so, you uh, sport for you. Just ups and downs. And I just yeah. thought, well, I'll maybe keep going for a while longer. <laughs> That's all. and the cheers in the background that's the main stadium just beside us something very big is going on over there just at the moment and uh, after a short period of time probably an hour or so you will hear the tannoy as the police come on to explain to everyone how to get out of the place in safety as long as they're not leaving or we're leaving they'll be okay yeah. but it's track and field and it generates huge crowds and great excitement Well, this looks plain sailing at the moment for South Africa. I'm interested the Stuart's actually playing the forehand instead of playing the backhand because there's a shoulder on the backhand just to rest off. Uh, England managed to get one in the last end. It was a pretty decent end, but they don't want to be chasing this in the last three. They want to score here if they can. Well, this looks better inside the short ball. It will start to bend very quickly at the end of its travel. There it goes. I want you to get too close, Jerry. Your weight is so good. You close it here, you get another shot. That's good look at it from the England pair, but it's still not right. Hands on hips. They're trying to figure it out. <coughs> hmm. It's another wasted ball out on the high side. and Jerry knows that. <laughs> it was a wasted ball. Well, he's looking at it, except to say, hmm, why didn't you move back? Good opportunity for South Africa to build a real close head of balls and for Stuart into playing a difficult shot. What do you think he's going to do? Well, he was so close the last time. I play a similar ball and just try and rest into it. They need the shot and the back position's against. That's the problem if you go start to search for it. Stuart just uh, kicking away some sort of little insect or something. Large moth? Hmm. Well, let's not start that list of things. No. <laughs> This is a chance to salvage something or reduce the damage at least. Well, he's in the area. Oh. Brisky shot. It's gone through. Mm. Well, I think there may only be the two. It is two. They're not massive scores these, but it's melting up against England now and it's starting to look ominous. They're running out of ends. 8-1 then, after six ends. So we start the seventh and after to the end of the set. There will be a second set, of course, so if the scores are level, there'll be a tiebreaker. But we hope that won't be necessary. It is a lovely evening to be watching lawn bowls. If you're sitting out there, it's really good. Yeah, it's very pleasant. There's no wind at all. No, but it's not quite but, so uh, baking hot now. It's no. cooled down. And it's just so pleasant. Still, and it's not a problem for the guys playing. That's the that's the good thing. It would be an extremely balmy evening. I think would be the description at home. <laughs> but here, it's extremely comfortable evening. <laughs> Don't lose much, Matt. Now, 
England need Merv King to step up a bit. This is better. Come on. Lovely. Front touch. A lot better. A lot better. Skip would be very relieved with that. We're always thinking with Mervyn that if he can get a couple of good ends together. Just lifts him. He can just carry on from yeah. there. Then was your first one, Matt. Oh, he doesn't look happy in the facial expression says, I'm not happy with that. Look. Well, that's so good there. Been worse. I'll, tell, I'll tell you what, that is good there, believe me. Maybe he was expecting something a lot better, or hoping. Chance to move it. Oh, that's good. That's very good. A little bit of disturbance makes all the difference in the world. He's brought the jack out into the open. He's playing well, Sean Adnall, isn't he? He's a very steady player, very experienced lead. There you go. And he dropped in as well. Yeah. We're not sure who's lying the shot. Still be England. Turn of the jack would be a major bonus. Well, that's certainly not like Stewart to play a ball just as wide and as that. He's struggling with the line a little bit coming this way. Played a couple of those. Pip Grandfield, just keep an eye on his charges. The big advantage about having uh, a coach or manager around the place is they can sort of be there as a shoulder and to comfort you. These two guys will not be discussing what shot to play with Pip, to be truthful with you, because uh, experienced, they really don't need any help. No. Very good for it. They'll come here, eh? Jerry, for what we want. Jerry, can you dip down? Can you get back down again? It'll come very quick now. There it is, just a little bit too late. Shot still available to you. A little drag of the jack, only two feet of weight required. Certainly would make a big difference. They need more in this end. Well, they need a, realistically, they need a three. Yeah. To give them any sort of a chance. Well, he's chasing after this one. Ball on the jack would be useful, or ball out even better. That's good. Goodness me, that could be four shots in this. So, took the ball clean as a whistle. That's what he was looking for. Left-hander, Jerry Baker, to try and survive this one. 
Bolt's just about to arrive at the head. He hasn't got the pace. He's no. dropped it well short. Well, that's a surprise. That is an absolute gift for England. England, they need to pull a few points back and they're going to do it. Just a matter of how many. It's four. Well, that's really good news. Here's more news of ASX Shot to Win, the great Commonwealth Games competition from Mitsubishi. Valerie's had her final shot at the Games. So, one of these new Mitsubishi ASXs. But you're still with the chance to win the other ASX. All you have to do is find the hidden key. Just visit asxshottowin.co.nz John McArdle is here under the flag of South Africa as a presidential nomination for a number of years. I think he gets a four-year term, but originally from Scotland. And of course he hasn't lost his Scottish accent either. It's good again. Decent. Now, mm. let's see what happens at this head. You see, that's the thing, David. When you watch as many balls as we do, you start to think that that is a decent start. Yes. Instead of a brilliant start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic start, it really is. Of course it is. <laughs> We've become immune, that's the trouble, to some of the good stuff. I was saying earlier on, he didn't give much away facially, but tonight the looks have been there. Yep, little disturbance. Oh, well, that's well, it's two shots, but yeah. it's good. And Stuart Airy will know that. He'll be quite happy that the fact that the ball's moved. Always going to be hard to get at it whenever it's in there. Now it's out in the open. Good balls, and they're in with a chance of going into the last end. But The ball, Merv, your weight's not bad. The one in there, sir. More of the same. Okay. Same weight. Got a chance with this. Oh, that's all. Bit unlucky. Mm, just overcorrected. Just move through about a meter or so. Steady ball. And this is building up now because that's blocking the way through. And Stuart really does need a couple of good balls here. Hmm. Previously, in other matches that we've watched, Stuart, this would not cause a problem. No, he just... If there was a problem, he dealt with it straight away. He would just get down and do it. Rely on him to do it, but uh, it's different tonight, the pressures are different in a final like this. Mm. He's well outside the line. There you go, for that pace anyway.
done, Jerry. It's another one. Still waiting for Stewart to sort it out. It'll hook across. It's all a matter of whether he makes a gap or gets a flick. It's going to run through, isn't Ooh, it? We got a little flick, but not enough. <laughs> well, he has to be careful. There's a spring of the jack. Stewart was to play to it, to the back position where England are sitting quite comfortably. At the moment, the way South Africa is set lie. Four shots by the looks of it, and there's no chance that England can do anything about it. If they pick up four, the set will be over. So we've got a choice. You either block it or you cover. The trouble with leaving it wide open is that Stewart can draw the shot, and it'll be 8-6. So uh, that's, where, that's where the main danger is. And by the same token, if you try to block it, absolutely right, you could leave a shoulder. Oh, the permutations. Well, he's going for cover, I think, and I can't blame him, to be truthful, because, uh, you know, the block shot is a wonderful shot to play, and it can absolutely be down, but the difficulty is, if you don't get it 100% right, it's bad news. There's a good, oh, that's a brilliant cover ball. Yeah. Sean Adenall raises an arm in acknowledgement of that. Now, this is... As you say, big damage here and the set's over. Well, he has to draw the shot. I don't even think he'll attempt to play to it. It's just he has to draw the shot. That gives them an outside into the last end, two shots down. He's got to get this right. Well, he's out on a good line this time. Got a chance with this one. He has to get back to the two balls. He's very close. I think he's going to draw this. That's a beauty. Goodness me, what a ball. What a he's pressure got it ball. Just when he most needed it. Well done. Oh. So, there we go. It's um, a blue. So. It's good for England, and the gap is now manageable. Yeah, so South Africans couldn't cover everything. Very good ball by Stuart Airy. That was a set saver. Last end of the set, and it's pretty close. Well, it's still possible. Just two points behind. South Africa lead 8-6, going to this final end of the first set. Not bad, is it? It's a good starter. He's played very steady stuff. And West Mervyn's had the odd good end. It's really Sean Adenall who's been the man at the front, who's been doing the damage. This is better. Go, man. Go, man. Go, man. Good start. Well done. That's another very good start. Yes. Yeah, First two balls have a tendency to set up things and um, the opportunity for playing shots and looking for opportunities to try and inflict pain and agony <laughs> into your opponent. It's only low. Absolutely. Absolutely. I tell you pain what, and agony, I love it. The anguish isn't any less. <laughs> I'm sure you can vouch for that. If it goes pear shipped, the anguish is definitely not any less. Yeah. I always say to people, look, when you're playing a match and uh, it goes wrong, 
match and you lose and it doesn't hurt there's something wrong yeah it's time to reassess why you're actually playing the sport in a serious manner just play it so right. good for you as well Sean now this is looking much better this is a interesting thing we've got to bleed for a couple of days and then feel better after that so <laughs> A little bit of mental anguish when you lose. Yeah. Here we go. On the backhand. Trying to drop all the way around. Good if he does. Yeah. That's very good bowling. I played the other side and tried to sweep into the two black ones. It looks a nicer shot than what he was trying to play. You know, if, he, if he plays that in, the chances are he'll tap his own ball over and create yeah. a target. Whereas if he plays across it, I think it might be better. Jerry sitting the stall out early. He's arriving with just a little bit of pace. Just a heavy draw. He's trying to close the head down. He's prepared to lose a single, but not two. South African camp. This is the shot I was thinking of. Coming in the forehand, trying to sweep into the black balls. He's going to get an A. Mm. Right, Difficult one. Players really taking their time. We're letting this uh, build up a little bit as well from a televisual point of view. Well, we're nervous, anxious moments for the players, and I'm sure everyone watching this at home can sense that. Oh, Jerry, what are you doing down there? You're leaving this open now. And just have a sniff of something here, don't they? Well, they should have. This looks a lot better. It's just swinging off. If he gets an edge, though, oh, well, no. I don't a little bit. Only one. Only one. Only one. Only one. Just got the angle to bring himself in. The ball goes down. It's a jack high target. I have to be a little bit careful here, guys, because uh, there's only the one. And oh, Stuart Airy's got another ball to come. We certainly don't want to add another. So if you're going to play this, play just to get to the ball and turn it around the corner. Or the jack. Gentle, gentle. There's two balls there. Oh. Oh. It's close, but... Um didn't get that. If you're getting into that, you get the three. England's still looking for their double. Is he saying if you get in there, you're in? Well, it's a possibility, let's put it that way. Well, 
8.6, two points the difference at the moment. And all sorts of permutations happen now. Well, the back positions also at Africa, they've also got a ball in there. They can kind of look for the wee push shot, ball on the ball, take it out for three. You have a chance to actually win the set rather than uh, just draw it. And what an end that will be. Try and get this ball to do a fairly narrow ball in a way. Oh, long, long pause while he looks. Yes. Aiming just, he's aiming just outside the jack. As the par comes off, it should bend. He's close to this. Very, very close. Unlucky. He was right in the middle of it, but he got a bad result. One blue. You heard the call there, one blue. So that means that a point goes. But sadly, it won't be enough. Because the first set finishes up 8 7 to South Africa. <coughs> Straight on into the first end then of the second set. And you suspected somehow that one this way. Yes, they were the better player. In the never led at any stage, they were always playing catch up. Mm. And it was a brave effort. They got close, but we sort of get players that have just settled down, others that haven't. And uh, at the moment the South Africans do look a little bit more comfortable. Took an hour for the first set, that's quite normal. Seems to be the sort of average. And always the facility to play the tie break should it be needed. But uh, with South Africa, with that first set under their belt, looking to build on that now. Uh, oh, that's good. Another two feet now, Murphy. Sure, that and all. Another good effort from him. Good way. I lost you around here. You don't want to get a piece of your ball. Get too much quicker, you're very good. Sweeping this one back with the arm. One six nine. Inch and a half. Give it a go uh, on the head, but try and get it off quite. Still, it's yeah. not a bad ball. Reaching off your arm, Murph. Still giving not much away facially. A little I think he's finding it a little tough. Third shot. There's another wire. Oh, okay. He's a big man, but he does have a, at times, a delightfully gentle touch. He does. Well, the South Africans do actually. If you look at their triples as well, they're in a very easy, relaxed way about them. The shake of the hand of the coach. <coughs> yes, it's a misnomer really. They're all big, powerful. <coughs> have got no gentle touch, you know. You can think of all sorts of examples that prove that one wrong. Stewart needs to stay high for the jack here. He's got a chance of just snicking it through. Got it. Ooh, did it travel enough? It's just 
first end. Really want to be right on this. Get away to a good start. Seriously look at winning the set early. That's a good ball. Hard to tell, very close. Oh, goodness me, there you go. The small one, believe me, beside him is small, but it is in direct proportion. That is a brute. Horrible, aren't they? Long ball to turn over, Jerry. Take some photographs of those boys there, Stuart, just getting rid of it. Oh, he didn't even like to touch it with his foot. Horrible. Oh, oh. Go on, get out of here. It's horrible, isn't it? It's a big sort of thing, it really is. Oh, there you go, he's carrying something off and I don't even want to carry enough. That wasn't what Stuart was uh, working with, that was something else. Nasty. Well, most of them are okay, so I've been informed. There's a one or two in particular that can really do you some damage. Very close with this. Very close with this. Oh, he's building a That South African ball is starting to look very vulnerable. Well, we think that's one doing it with a measure. that across. Mm, he's leaving himself very vulnerable here. This ball goes out. Well, the ball goes over the top. I can turn the ball onto Jack. You could make two or three. If you come inside with a little bit of pace, you could take the South African ball away. The one thing not to be is wide. That's exactly what he is. Yeah. Bit of a pity, you know, it's a couple of chances he'd gone to the balls. He obviously didn't want to play it with too much power. Depends how many shots are in it. That's the biggest question I have. How many shots are there there? Still think it's one in a measure. So I think they have to be careful here because they don't want to take their own ball out with weight but if they turn it over once and that's would be on Jerry, bear in mind he's a left hander coming in this direction turn the ball over once, end of story, there you go, simple as that if he goes driving at it, oh dear, all sorts of things could happen men's triples and two of the ladies successful triples as well gold medals abound in South Africa it's been a very good games for them already
Well, he's taking the risky shot on, and I think this could be very dangerous for him. Oh, just got away with it, and only just. Well, he favours still two. It didn't make any difference, one in, one out. Already had his own ball out. It is, it's two on blue. So that means that England are off to a decent start. A disaster will affect us and the emergency services we take for granted. A flood or serious earthquake could easily stop an ambulance or a In a major disaster, hospitals will be stretched beyond capacity. If so, it'll be up to you to take care of your family. Make sure you're prepared before it happens. Visit getthrough.govt. Get ready now. A little bit pushy at it. Not much. I'll tell you what, that's a good start actually. That stopped very, very quickly on forward movement. chance for this. Well, got a little edge. Oh, it's going to be close. for the ball. Oh, he's got it. Well, that was a big solid contact. He'd be a happy boy with that one. It goes. Well, there's space and gaps all around this one. Never pretty, but uh, at the same time, potentially dangerous. Almost fine. It's, uh, you can lose threes and fours very easily. Looking at Jerry Baker and Sean Adenor, if Adenor hadn't been quite so consistent, then there might have been a different story. Yeah, so we sort of feed off each other in pairs, that's, yeah. that's the thing, you know, if you're going to go through a bit of a, a funny phase or a phase or whatever, your partner has a tendency to be there. I suppose like all things working as a team, you have to get the balance right and, and you have to help each other out. Right with you and I. Exactly. <laughs> I'm grateful for all the help you give me, David. He's
close for this. He's very oh, close for this. Better, isn't it? Well, that's more like the Stuart Airy we have seen. Absolutely. All the way through this event. The good signs are back. Maybe the one, Jerry. So far off. Difficult to remove it as well. If there's a gap between the ball and the jack, you can arrive at it with a little bit of pace. Back position is oh, fairly mixed. He's in the area to make some sort of contact, but the back ball's there. There it is. And the ball went with it. The jack stopped <laughs> in the back ball and the ball went with it. That's probably... He's uh, unlucky, to say the least. There you go. That was the shot the Stuart Airy played. Somebody's not very happy, a little one at the back of the stand. That's the noise you can hear. to get a nice sweet connection not bad it's around the back and that's okay it's another one of the performance coaches Terry or sorry Tommy Armstrong from England ex international from some years ago England have a tendency to use their uh, very experienced ex internationals coaching just come off the edge good effort Position's good. Wants to try and he can. Looks like he's trying to get off the ball. Oh, not enough. Mm. Have to settle for a double. So going well at the start of the after they lost the first eight seven. They're four 0 up after two. Extended arm, Sean Adenal, big step forward, hasn't been just as consistent going this direction. That's 
Calcutta. Not going to be happy with that. We're happy. Happier. Yeah, it's, it's a good start though, 4 0 after two ends. It it's, is. Uh, it's, it's quite tidy. Going much better. First time in the match. In fact, they've been in the lead at any stage. So, after taking the first end, and now the second, continuing to build. It's not bad, more than where it is, because they're to be pumped up into the head further away than what it actually is. Maybe two and a half feet short. And so this distance is pretty good going. Don't think this one's going to make the trip. Oh, a wee chance here, a rare loose end from Sean. That's better. That's really a last one. Tightens everything right down. Right in the middle. No target. Hidden from the front one for the par drive. This is a much better shot for us. Here we go. Hidden from the front as we were saying. It's going to have to be a draw or else an opening up shot. Thanks mate. Much appreciated. So Stuart. He's under. It doesn't ever look truly comfortable when he plays the running balls. He no. seems to be much better whenever he's just dropping them in. Well, good opportunity for England to score again. The heavier the better. Opportunity for Stuart Airy just to drop another one in if he can. Gently, gently. Doesn't want to lose his ball. It's gone. Oh, what a shame. Mm, that's unusual. Yeah, usually very steady on those. I think South Africa are in a heap of trouble in this end. And this set's going to run away very quickly. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Steady. Oh, Stuart. Unlucky. He's opened it up. Don't mind if it's the last ball. No. There you go. Well, there you go. Not really quite sure how to describe this chap, to be honest with you. 
hot must that be? Oh, sitting in that, watching this. I think we can tell it's pretty hot, actually. But anyway, back to the action for a moment. was just a little bit under and that's probably pushing in for another shot. As I say, South Africa are deep stuck on this one and in a lot of trouble. And it doesn't look like a very attractive head to try and get out of trouble and everything's going away from it. Doesn't matter now, this is the last ball. Touching the jacks a bonus, oh look at that, that's probably oh, five now. Stewart lost his first one in the ditch, but every other ball counted. That's a massive score at this stage. Almost certainly going to take us into a tie break now. And there it is. It's the five. And that's really good, really good for England. Nine nil after three of the nine ends in the second set. The first set, of course, to South Africa, 8-7. So six successive ends, consecutive ends to England then, and in the process, scoring 15 points. Shows you how far they've revived their play. And South Africa have... They let the lead slip and they lost Lost it early on here, and they're struggling a little bit. England seem to be much more back to their usual selves. It's the last end was really bad to be started off as if it was going to be a bit of a problem, and uh, Jerry wasn't able to get them out of trouble and even helped them along the way by pushing in the ball. He didn't look at all happy in that end, did he? No. Yeah, well done. This one's a bit better for us, I thought. In a decent position here. But 9-0 after three ends, well, it's going to be a little back from that. Especially on a tight, as it turned out, a very tight first set.
rồi thôi A little turnover that ball would be useful. Well, here's Jerry Baker sort of taking a bit of a walk to be truthful. He's not really having an awful lot of an impact into this game at the moment. Certainly not. And the difference is um, visible. Well, this is a bit like the last end when England put South Africa in a bit of trouble. Voices here, play a runner or just try and drop it in. The runner is a percentage shot. You have a chance of taking balls out of the head. Pull that across. Really pull that across. Might take one out. Yep, he's got that one. But it's a long way away from the target. Seems to be to be truthful with you a bit of the problem. You know, Jerry is not getting there, he really isn't. He's he's just off a half decent game, but he's some way away from a good game the last six ends and it shows in the score line there's just far too many shots being accumulated by England. Well, two or three more ends and they should tidy this up. Well, you can see the problem for Stuart Airy and the target as well. He's down on right in the middle of it, I think. Oh, he slipped the ball off to the side. The hit solid, run through, push one out, force the other one through, in for second. He just got the edge of it. It seemed to kick out at the last moment. Not a lot of damage done. So two on red which means South Africa are on the score sheet in this second set. And it's now 9-2, so it's a start for South Africa, but still some way to go. Okay, Sean. the T-Bell. Send. We're not at all with the second delivery. And what sets are a bit of a sprint with three ball pairs. Which at the same time, they you know, if you get away to a good start, 
you can actually be uh, hanging on for the last three or four rounds. You want to keep driving home. The one shots, the two shots, they add up very, very quickly, especially when you've picked up a five. It's more like it. That's a useful one. Slide under, it's away. If England can score another couple of, that will virtually get them over the line in this set. And Sean, I don't know, not playing as consistently as he has been. That's what I'm saying. I need to drive this home because at the moment the South Africans have gone off the boil for the last well probably for about the last 40 minutes or so and they would really like to take the second set as quickly as possible while they're still off their game yep you just don't know when they're going to come back into it and uh, they certainly don't want to leave it <coughs> same time South Africa will be thinking to themselves we need to start picking because just not at this. As I said, it has been a marvellous game. Men's and gold medalists. Calling it, but it looks like it's dropping short again. And Jerry's just been a yard away with just too many balls. Jerry, left hand, should swing back with the, the left hand forehand, certainly looks on a decent line, it's time to play a good ball Jerry, it's been a while, there it is, that's the shot, and dropped in against the bias. Needs the pace on this. He needs to run. He really needs to run. It's not bad. Not getting front enough. Could be. Close. Yeah. Well, we think it's. Well, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> no, not quite. We are. We have to say, folks, we are probably about uh, 25 yards and up at an angle as well. So it's quite difficult for us. As you can hear, other around us at the moment. Still plenty of matches, in fact, either side of us. If the clock ticks on to, what, 9.15 local time here in Delhi. In the evening, it's been another full day of quality entertainment. We've really enjoyed it. Little ceremonies as well. The balls by Jerry, and very long and coming, I can tell you. But very welcome for the South African support. <laughs> Maybe that's enough to get Jerry going, to give him a little bit of stimulus to get in. <laughs> we 
do. I guess that's why they're the elite sponsor of the Silver Fern. <laughs> element of inconsistency dropping into players games um, England the last two ends, two twos lots of action here as you can hear and still the play goes on into the night so this is good stuff here in Delhi no real consistency from the big man Sean Allen slightly lost his game too off the boil, as David said, both of the South Africans. sound quite simple, just put it there. <laughs> no, that's not where he intended. It was a, should have been a lot closer. Merv looks a bit baffled. As he now the big man's chance. Um, corrections to be made and any edge in the jack would have been a lot worse for him as it is England in not a bad position and this match hasn't really lived up to expectation it's yeah. sort of misfiring along the isn't it? haven't got a sort of shape to it at the moment no no it's uh, it's one of those games that you play in a case and sort of grinding out games the prize on this occasion just happens to be a gold medal which uh, you know you're putting absolutely everything into it but it's hard to enjoy it that's the problem hard to enjoy it when you're like this that's i'm sure not everyone's in top form i'm not saying the, the sparkling shots as we would call it the, the really good smart clever bowling that's decent you know if, if you manage to together with every ball within a foot the way this is going when this at a counter so that can happen extra pressure of a finals match made the point that Jerry's been below par really and he needs to just do something because this is not going their way at the moment he's only been below par really since um, end of the first set and they were clinging on after that it's all been a bit of a struggle he's played one end with a couple of good but uh, other than that he just hasn't been able to feel the weight struggle with the line a little bit Hence why England were 9 0 up. And got a couple back each end, but just trying to get a little tap on the ball to punch it through. There it goes. That's okay. That leaves gaps and one round behind. That's four shots in it. And really, four shots at this stage would just tie it up. Yeah. A little slide stopped very, very quickly indeed. 
Not sure if that's going to make any difference. Just got the thinnest of edges, but chopped away. England are all around this jack. So it's an open head, lots of holes, but a little touch in the jack could make another five. And that would be the end of the party. They'll play one or two ends to finish off the set, but that's all. We'll get into the tie break. I'm off or something distracting, Stuart. Go again. Crickets and fine voice this evening. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Part of the steamy night. Mm, he's frustrated, <laughs> isn't he? Not quite there. I think they all are actually for some reason. Yeah, they, no, they're just not quite producing yeah. the A game exactly. in, in the showpiece final. They're not really doing themselves. Both of these pairs in the earlier stages. It's one of these dogged performances. You have to dig out shots. You have to work really, really hard. It takes away an element of the um, all the little fancy shots that are available. But having said that, just trying to work out the line, trying to reduce the percent or increase the percentages of success and. Curious. This doesn't look good again. He won through the inside. Mm. Inspiration there, is there? No, no, and not a lot of communication either. Things have gone very quiet. Yeah, I think they're both a bit puzzled and struggling. And as you say, very little communication. Yep, there's another bug. Another hazard, another rather large one being uh, carried off. Just have a look at your job description. It says on any other business at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Still. One on. Which means it's another. Point for England. And there we are, confirmation. It's with just three ends to go. Right. ...to go, but that would take it to one all if England were to win the second set and then the tiebreaker would come in. Best of three. Absolutely, but if they win two singles, that's the end of it. Yeah. They won't play the last end, they'll be into the tiebreak and end early. South Africa really will be very disappointed in the second set. It's not quite the gripping match we'd hoped for. Time so we had two absolutely fantastic gold medal playoffs last night in the triples and just occasionally it happens like yeah. this you know where it's not you know the most attractive game and but it has got other aspects to it which i find completely fascinating i really do the balls are definitely stopping earlier and with that she must have lost a bit of pace. Clear road. And late. There's no doubt they get a pretty heavy dew here during the night. I know that talking to some of the crew in the morning, everything is covered in a thick layer of moisture. But obviously that comes a lot later in the night moment there's no sign of that but you wonder if there's a little element of it starts to creep in the further we get into the evening 
that could affect me. Not sure if that was the case and uh, last night, but you know, last night and tonight are very similar. And really, there wasn't any problems for any of the players no. on both matches. No. So throw that one out the window. It's just, just sometimes you know, oh, good ball, very good ball to rest that off clean. There was, it, it just happens in matches sometimes. I suppose in many other ways, it's it's a bit like. Uh, any sports, but like football or whatever, you know, you get a Manchester United Liverpool game in the final of the FA Cup or something. Everybody's expecting a lot, but it turns out to be a rather difficult affair. How often that does happen? Yeah, you know, big it's disappointment. Yeah, it's not that this is, but you know, it's just not quite sparking in the way we hoped it would. No, it's not. Big shout for on the other ring. Play Australia. And they're both vocal sets of supporters out there. Vocal teams as well. Yes, well, things are happening around us, there's no doubt about that. And what's but happening here? In the meantime, struggle for Jerry. No, still. Mm. Just can't crack it. Left-hander Jerry Baker into the ball if he can with this one. A couple of shots against through the gap. Does happen when things aren't going particularly well. When you're down, you yes, absolutely. There you go, all the way through. As you say, David, when you're down, you're down, and someone falls over you at the same time. <laughs> Just to make sure. Well, the falling over hasn't happened yet, but it could do. Mm, not a bad ball there. We have uh, been very championships, I have to say. We've only lost a couple of players for uh, the odd match or two. It just fell a little bit ill, but uh, they were quickly replaced by a substitute, mainly due to a little bit of heat stroke and deep. Nothing easy about this either if you're playing it on this side. I'll have a go at this, big drive. There yeah, one away Nothing. maybe. Nothing. Oh dear, that's how hard that was. It came back up a, up the green again. Oh, missed it. Now watch it just coming back. There you go. No, <laughs> that really. was shifty. Well it was, it's very rare that happens. But I tell you what, they're just closing this right down. They'll play one more end and then into the tie break. Miss chance. Let's see what's involved here. Sean having a look. Everything kicked away. Oh, three. Yes. Well, they were spread about a bit. Very difficult for us to tell how many were involved. 13-4, England now lead. 
Second set, having lost the first 8-7 to South Africa. They'll play one more end because it is possible, mathematically possible, that South Africa can score a lot of shots in the next three ends. But they will know that they'll be moving to a tie break probably after the next end. Well, it's the first time we've seen that uh, little chat that they have and not saying much throughout the evening to each other, but there's just a little look of concern on their faces, thinking, what can we do to change this round? Um, nothing revolutionary about that, really, but this set's just almost dead and buried. few days starting to take its effect on South Africa the humidity as well but they're starting to make mistakes that really were not there at the start of the first set and that's quite often the case the adrenaline's there for the first and then the adrenaline settles yeah. as the game keeps going and progresses they manage to hang on and just get over the line having lost six shots in succession in the last three ends of the first set in and now where there's so much trouble going. And that effort from Sean Adenal just now, totally unlike anything he played yeah, early on. It just looks tired, doesn't it? Looks it looks weary, yeah. Yes, it does look tired and weary. This is better. That is better, well done. when you just can't keep it going. Need a minimum of three shots, England, or sorry, South Africa, to stop England taking this set. We've seen just recently. Likely. Highly unlikely. Well, that's, that's much better. Must be pleased to see that one. I would say it is because it's been a while. It's so been a while. There's been far too long between that and the last good one. It's uh, a matter of trying to find your form, looking forward to the tie break. And the Stuart area might be tempted a little go at this. <laughs> a little practice shot. Right on the edge of the mat. That's okay, they're just closing the head down, that's all they're doing. They want to make sure they don't go into another end if they can yeah. avoid it. Be quite prepared to let South Africa have two shots, but they don't want to lose a three. And just let anyone know about the noise that's going on beside us, that there's another man playing in the pairs against Wales. 
the women's. And that's the women's, yes, the women's playoff for the bronze medal. And at the moment, after two ends of the tie break, Wales are leading three shots to one. just to get a really close third shot or second shot so Jerry can you add ball drops down if he can then we'll be into the last end of the set he's close for this that looks good for three I think that's got to be worth hitting it or at least playing controlled weight to it Yep, there it is, and Stuart Airy will be having a little bash at this, I'm certain of it. Doesn't really want to go into the last end of the of the set if he can avoid it. This is a tough one, isn't it? Well, not really, because it's a big open head. Oh, that's to be so precise. To mm, that's a bad miss, David, believe me. That is, is, a, that yeah. is a bad miss. That target was, oh, wide minimum. Well, now that means we will play the end. South Africa and that means that the score moves on oh he, he just didn't get it away right at all but anyway so 13-7 to England in this second set and this is the final end. The reason why we're playing the final end at 13-7 mathematically possible for South Africa to draw the set. 13 all. And win the match. Well that is highly unlikely, but one never knows in this sometimes crazy game. somewhere in the background, I'm not quite sure, it's not the F oh, No, I think it's a church uh, organ. And yeah, it's a so strange so one. Uh, one never knows at night in Delhi what's going on <laughs> around the stadium. It's just behind us, but all sorts of things very close by as well. Two good goals. Merwin's a long way away at the moment, but uh, we'll let you know how the, the ladies are getting on as well. Such a disappointment this really because we were hoping a really high quality match. And it's just not turned out that way. It's just been hard work for both of them. Well we can let you know that the Welsh ladies have taken a bronze medal in the pairs. They've beaten Australia. Meanwhile, the destiny of the gold medal for the men's pairs here remains unsolved. Yes, indeed. But if you're tuning in to us, Hannah Smith and Amwin Button. I've got the bronze medal, so start your texting, folks. If you're girls, send them some congratulations. <laughs> Disappointment for the Aussie girls. They promised so much oh, during this event. A tough time, haven't they? Back to the action. 
against Stuart Airy here. It's not possible, surely it's not possible for South Africa to score six in this end. This one should dive into it, he's very close here. Good weight, good weight. Oh, well he's found the hole. Still a good ball on the head. We just need to tidy up this final end of the second set. Well, I don't think this one's going to run the length. There's a chance here for Stuart Airy just to... A little tiny bit of pace. Oh dear. Quite a lot of pace. Oh, Stuart. Be dangerous. Well, now that's not the ideal thing to happen. Outside opportunity. Well, it makes Jerry Baker's ball. It's just dropped a little bit Four short. Africa. Now, if he pops another one in, there's a very, very outside chance here. It's me, I don't believe this. Well, there's definite three. Stuart Airy's ball is still in there at the moment. But uh, it's an added bit of pressure they didn't want to see. And not only that, but it's giving South Africa just a little bit of confidence. A little bit of... That's all. Well, as a spectacle, it's not been the best. It's fallen short of what we'd hoped. Oh, we can see that there's probably four shots in it at the moment. Two balls to come. One from Stuart Airy. Jerry Baker. A little bit of movement around the place just as there's others celebrating the bronze medal for the Welsh girls. It's on the rink that's a couple of... Just a little bit of movement. He could stop all of this just with this one ball here. If he can get it right down the middle to the jack. Oh, he's playing the backhand. Well, there's a great big gap in the backhand. He needs a clear road with this. He needs a clear... Oh, he doesn't want to turn that over. Whoa. Whoa, dear me. What was he... Oh, I'm amazed he played that shot. Absolutely staggering. <laughs> Very good forehand runner to me, and he played the backhand, which was... I'm very tentative. I think there's still only the four though. Put too close for comfort. There it goes, turns it over. It's not enough though. Well, there we go now. Hmm, it's not in. Just looking at the, the purple coloured ball with a red sticker on it against the red. The only way to get this is to play the ball on the ball and stay in for six shots. I'm not saying it's not possible, it is possible, it's just downright difficult, that's all. Also, the South Africans should never have been in this situation. They should never have been allowed an opportunity to get six shots in this end. And if they do, what a fantastic ball it will be because they've been, be truthful about it, they've been completely outplayed in the second set. Yep. But it's, uh, anything's possible the way it's set up. It really is. I'd be very surprised to be standing there with a chance of the match. Yep, there's a little indicator. And put the foot down, Sean. 
I don't see where it is. Now, Jerry, can you bring one out of the bag here? This would be an unbelievable bowl. Oh, it looks wide. It's going to be hard to get back from there because he's just carrying a slight bit of weight. Unless it dies very quickly. Has he got it? He has got it. I don't believe it. <coughs> what a bowl. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe that. The impossible has happened. The impossible has very definitely happened here oh, in that's Delhi. unbelievable. They're waiting to find out. They were resigned to going to the sudden death playoff. The tie break and look at that. Oh, this is incredible. That is stag absolutely staggering. We were saying it was most unlikely. It couldn't happen. It has just happened in front of our eyes. What a ball. Jerry Baker, who has struggled, to be fair, most of the second set, plays the ball of the match to win the gold medal. Six shots on the last end to draw the set, and he takes the gold along with Sean Adenal. That is an unbelievable result. England must be totally devastated. He had total control, 13-4 with two ends to go. And lost a three and a six. Oh and look at Stuart Airy. He's absolutely and, he, and he should be. He really should be because to be truthful with it, he, none of us actually thought it was even possible right up to the last couple of balls at the last end. Well, I think everyone was resigned, weren't they, to the tiebreaker? Well, the writing was on the wall, and Stuart has played so well in this championship. Probably one of the men who actually played during the pairs. He's taken himself well, off into the middle of the green. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Point really, South Africa were outplayed throughout virtually the whole match, and yet they've won it. Stuart. He's just on his own, walking away from the middle of the green. He just can't believe that happened. He's absolutely, truly devastated. As we see some of the great balls that have been played over this match, it's the first couple of ends. Things still looking quite good. There we go. England in control at this stage. There we go, pushing on. This man has been so steady. He played so well in this match as well, to be truthful with you. England dominating all the way in the second More and more. Jack. And there can't have been a more emotional fighting match here. I, I challenge you to find one oh, on this. No, I've been involved in so many. I don't think I've ever seen anyone pick up a <laughs> maximum of six shots when required. And it was just that ball at the end. There it is. Jerry knew that he had it. I thought he was a little bit wide to get the ball on the ball, but I didn't realise he could get the ball clean. And there's uh, Stuart Airy walking about on his own, totally devastated, trying to compose himself to lift the silver medal, knowing that he was so close to get a chance at the gold. Mervyn King just explaining things to the team management. That's one of those things that happens. And, you know, Mervyn's, well... <clears throat> He's a very steady character. He'll realise it's just one of those things. But this can sometimes you only get one and that's the end of it. But a wonderful end and a fascinating end and a dramatic end to the pair's gold medal. South Africa take it. And England go home for the silver.
today at the Commonwealth Games. Scintillating sevens finals on Sky Sport 4, Nick Willis in the 1500 metre final on Sky Sport 5, and Silver Ferns Joe Sport 7. The Delhi Commonwealth Games. Today, check guides for times. Sky Sport. October. Sky brings you extensive coverage of the World Rowing Championships from Karapiro. The Kiwis take flight in the Rugby League Four Nations, and the New Zealand Breakers return to the home of sport. November. The Aussies look for revenge against England in the Ashes Series. The All Blacks end of the year tour to the north. Then in December, the IRB Sevens World Series kicks off in Dubai. Sky Sport, home of the ultimate fan. People love MySky HDI. You can pause and rewind live TV. Automatically record every episode in a series with Series Link. Watch and record an incredible range of quality channels at the touch of a button. Or two channels at the same time while watching a third live. Watch downloaded movies and entertainment on demand. And you'll be thrilled to hear that MySky HDI you hundreds of dollars. In fact, it's yours for just $15 a month on any Sky digital subscription and a low one-off installation cost. And if you have an HD television, you can watch sports and movies in definition for only $10 extra a month. Plus, if something goes wrong with this box, you can keep smiling knowing Sky place it. No wonder it's New Zealand's number one personal video recorder. My Sky HDI. Your happy Everyday punters about to take on the block. Are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> They've got no idea. Come on! Yeah. Come on! Come on! Yeah. Come on! Four couples, four apartments. New challenge. Get ready for the block 2010. Soon. Right. Here's more news of ASX Shot to Win, the great Commonwealth Games competition from Mitsubishi. Valerie's had her final shot at the Games. So, one of these new Mitsubishi ASXs has been won, but you're still with the chance to win the other ASX. All you have to do is find the hidden key. Just visit asxshottowin.co.nz and good luck. Yes, that's why they're the elite sponsor of the Silver Well, Andrea Miller looking to do what no New Zealand athlete has done since 1962, and that is women. Good evening everybody and a warm welcome back to the JN Sports in New Delhi. The floodlights are on. We've got the gold medal match tonight for the women's pairs uh, with England taking on Malaysia here on rink one and a great deal of expectation about this clash which is the culmination of a lot of matches and two very strong teams fighting it out for the gold medal here. The loser, of course, to get the silver earlier on. We had some tremendous games en route to this final. The temperature is 29 degrees Celsius now. In New Delhi, the humidity is 38%. Uh, negligible wind speed. We've had a, a pretty blustery day, all told here. Uh, a far windier day than uh, we've had in the tournament, but it's a, a calm evening and the players are out on the rink already they've been having a few trial bowl ups and here it is this is malaysia england looking to improve on two bronze medals so far they got the bronze in the men's triples the women's triples as well malaysia traditionally very strong in law they have some of the very best lawn bowlers in the world 
So this is the scene here at the JN Sports Complex and this is the route to the final. Uh, England beat Australia in a very indeed on rink seven earlier on Malaysia defeated Wales England were qualifiers from the semi-final playoffs they had to play a, a playoff to get into the semi-final so they've done well they have fought their way through Malaysia having a, a straightforward run straight into the semi-final from the sectional phase and now facing England here after that uh, victory over Wales in two sets so a lot of anticipation, the England team, the lead is Ellen Faulkner, the skip Amy Monkhouse, they recorded a really nail-biting success just uh, an hour and a half or so ago against Australia and now they step up for their crack at gold medal glory here in India. Their opponents, their strong, it's Malaysia. And here's Skip is Noor Hashima, H.J. Ismail, and the lead-off will be Zareni Khalid. And they're very good players indeed. So quite a prospect here. I'm Simon Holt. With me in the commentary box again is Mike Rabbit. Uh, what about this uh, prospect tonight, Mike? Both these teams, Simon, and good evening to you, have uh, really uh, done very, very well to uh, get into... Uh, this particular gold medal match. England specifically coming through the uh, semi-final where Malaysia went straight through to the semi-finals and then they had a very, very good win and a straight sets win and quite comfortably 11-4-9-3. So England, uh, in actual fact, did uh, extremely well. It was a really tense semi-final and uh, Australia had the last bowl to be able to knock England out. But here they are, the and both of the English players have uh, won medals in the past at the Commonwealth Games. Both Alan Faulkner won a gold in the fours at Manchester. Amy Monkhouse a bronze on her Commonwealth Games in Manchester as well in the pairs. But they will be looking to step up on those achievements here tonight against a strong Malaysian team. And uh, we have readiness for play, and it will be Zeroni Khalid uh, who will get us underway. And no worries in determining red disc, blue disc. Tonight, Malaysia are playing with the orange bowls, and England are playing with the red bowls. So you'll be easily able to determine tonight who is holding his shot. And Teams, and there is a wonderful start for Zeroni Khaled right on the jack with the very first bowl. And Faulkner is the lead for England. Adam Faulkner from Wiz Beach originally lives in. She's a marketing coordinator and a highly experienced uh, bowls player. We have said on many that the Leeds play such an important pass and uh, Ellen competed in the singles in Melbourne. Um, hence, I think you'll see right throughout the night, and this is the first bowl by Cal right on the money, you'll see these Leeds pepper the jack all night. And it's such an important part of this gold medal match, the Leeds. Good line. Could pick up the jack. Travelled a little bit too far through, but an excellent delivery. That'll give her a lot of confidence. Two sets. And then if it's tied at a set all, we'll go into the tie break.
a good line, but she's left that one way short. So, nervous start for uh, Ellen Faulkner. She's left those uh, couple very, very short indeed, where each bowl of Zerani Caleb is at the head, except for that first one. Anyway, so uh, first uh, little mini break, if you like. Yep. Now the skip time in the gold medal match, women's pairs. And the skip for Malaysia is Noor Hashima, H.J. Ismail. Made her international debut in 1995. She's 39 years old from the Selangor region of Malaysia. Very experienced bowler. Well, they have the uh, the two best backwoods. They're holding shot at the moment, but it's a uh, wide open head. Uh, a little bit of a nervous start for um, all players. England, as you mentioned, Simon, this is their third match today. Wonder whether that could be a tell later in the match. Well, played through the heat of the day. It'll be a relief now. Temperatures are uh, much easier to cope with. on the inset front as well tonight which is a blessing for whatever reason Amy Monkhouse from Grim yeah, we're done. We're done. yeah good bowl there just past the jack those little tees you see there are the where the foot is that indicates the two meters from the back of the jack in the center of the rink and the other tees uh, if the jack goes out of play, he's spotted, and that's one and a half metres from that foot, if you like, where the two is. Just squirted through there, just got the wick. She'll have one more. Ismail made her Commonwealth Games debut at Kuala Lumpur in 1998, won bronze in the fours. But has also competed at Manchester and Melbourne four years ago. So Ellen Faulkner shouting out the instructions to Amy Monkhouse, both these English ladies, 31 years of age. Here's the Malaysian flag and the Malaysian manager, Major Azizan. Deflection could do the trick here for England. Don't it's pretty close. He would have loved to have picked that jack up from the wick. It came in there, got a little wick off the orange bowl of Malaysia, but they're going to go for a measure in the very first end. Here it is. In there now. Got a little touch on the first one. Could have gone out a little bit further than they were hoping it would, and then they might have had to, a couple of shots. The possibility of being one down which is the case. Yes, confirmation that it's one to Malaysia. Conclusion of the first end. Lawn bowls, and as we've seen straight away, we've seen it's so much in uh, these Commonwealth Games that the team that wins the end the mat away and have done that giving them the last bowl of the end Thank you. 
to Roni Khaled right on the money once again. You can have a look at that line. Absolute perfect line. Just a half a yard over in weight. And that was a better bowl for Ellen Fort. She was up to the head. Just ran on a little bit. Got a little bit of correction of the grass to do. It's a beautiful goal there from Zorani Khalid. Almost perfect, just past the jack. So England being challenged here. from Zorani Khalid and her third delivery is on its way here and again it looks a good line it's very close and that's terrific bowls again three near identical deliveries and her skipper will be very proud of her there yeah, magnificent bowling You can throw a tissue over those. And it makes it hard uh, with the two bowls, one at the back and one to the side but behind the jack. To be able to get really at that head, you've either got to try and clear some out initially. And I'm just wondering whether Amy Monkhouse is going to do that. No, she's going to try and draw the shot. She's going to try and sit on that Malaysian bowl, the front one, but she's overcooked it. But maybe she's putting one at the back if she does have a crack at it. A little bank of Malaysian supporters just commentary position. They, I think they threatened to get quite voluble. Oh, this is just sensational bowling. Now there's four shots at the moment, but at some stage you would think you've either got those up or try and draw the shot on the backhand and get the uh, jack to move to the left as you look at it as we watch the replay. But she's coming the forehand again. Come on here, Ames. Come on, Ames. And that's just holding its line. You still think that's three? No, maybe just two. But our uh, camera can give a little bit of a distance. It's going to be just uh, under the line, a little underweight as well. And roll the right way. There's the target, one, two, three, possible measure for four. Now this is a big bowl to start this first set of the gold medal match in the women's pairs for Amy Monkhouse. Slipping away. What about the pace? Will it pull up? No, it won't. This is going for England. Malaysia winning the first end. Unless um, Nor Hashima Esmail makes uh, an error here, yeah, um, England are going to find themselves. Probably uh, 
a minimum of four nil down after two ends. There's a chance she could draw another. And you see any Kelly just going and placing the foot where the jack sits and where she wants the ball, giving her an extra side in there. There it is. And she does it nearly every ball. That's got to really motor that. That was never getting there. How many? What's the damage? And it is three. Three to Malaysia. And as we suspected, that's four nil after two. Very bright start for the orange bowls here. And They've just draw outdrawn uh, England so far. England might just take uh, a little while to get into this match, Simon. They only finished, as you mentioned, an hour and a quarter ago, so they haven't had long to have a turnaround. Uh, finished their match in pretty quick time, so they've had a little bit uh, of extra, and they've only played that one game to get into the grand final, where this is England's third. Despite winning that uh, last end, Malaysia have handed the mat to England. And Helen Faulkner opted for a jack um, to then delivered a, a pretty short bowl as well. Mary Price, the England manager. And they ran it again. Just going to be outside the Malaysian ball there for Ellen Faulkner. This uh, young girl, Zorani Khaled, has really found line and length very early in this match. It's just sublime bowling at the moment from Khaled. This is just sensational bowling. All the way. Come on. Down. England needs oh, well a bowl like this. Brilliant reply from the young lady, Ellen Faulkner. Took a little in the early part of its passage, but again it's right there. It might nudge Ellen's all. This is just of Malaysia at the moment, Simon. They just uh, at the target the whole time. Here's Ellen Fork, and this is a beaut bowl. That might just give her a little bit of confidence. You get of Amy Monkhouse applauding that one. You almost say though that uh, Mike, it's almost impossible for for to continue to play like this. At some stage, she's she's got to lose this touch and it, it may be a case of England in these early ends just weathering the storm might be uh, right on the money and this one's got to get around she can get around and there's that little ridge again that uh, she can knock to just slip through the gap his mail the the skip from Malaysia. Yes, uh, Malaysia very strongly represented in the bowls here. Not the singles to be completed yet. They have uh, Safran Saeed in the men's and the uh, twice gold medalist Ahmad in the women's and a great effort there well all of a sudden England have rep that's great bowling we thought England were under pressure now Malaysia for the first time this is only the third in they're under a bit of pressure
to take Ellen Faulkner's bowl. The jack is sprung. And it looks as though Malaysia might have taken a shot there. They certainly think that uh, picture would tend to endorse that impression. There's the big crew of Malaysian bowlers. Most of those uh, youngsters competed in the games. Yeah, what a, a magnificent bowl. She was under awful amount of pressure. Amy bowls there. Well, in actual fact, Ellen and Amy together had covered the jack and then uh, Ismail comes up with a shot like that. A pace that she might just get onto the Malaysia. Alan Faulkner getting into the game. Now you would think that red bowl just to the right of the bowl at the moment has turned out. A little bit of a difficult choice to make here whether she actually draws the shot or whether she plays onto her own orange bowls and tries to promote one of her own. Simon's just been uh, molested by one of the many millions of varieties of bugs here. We are on rink uh, green one and this is bug heaven. <laughs> just been attacked. We've got a citronella stick burning then I think it's just attracted the flies. Gold medal women's pairs. She's trying to promote something and it's just held its line again. Well, she's promoted England there. Two for the Reds. And so England get off the mark. That didn't go Malaysia's way. She only promoted the Red Bowl there, the English Red Bowl. So two to England. And that's uh, four. Four two. head in that third end. It's excellent bowling from the ladies, Simon. They are just really nailing their drawing and a couple of on shots that we've seen uh, by Ismail were right on the money and you saw on both those occasions her bowl started to straighten right at the end and just held its line. She was able to crash in but on that occasion she's given one away. This is the young lead, Zarani Khalid. She's human after all, Simon. Yeah, she hasn't bowled many uh, bad ones so far. Just slipped through. Oh. Yeah, well done. Well done. getting on the money as well.
that's the nearest so far. Number the Malaysian team bowlers in the crowd. Along with the uh, English uh, women's player Sandy Hazel, who uh, won the bronze medal in the triples last night. She's England. been deserted by her teammates, Jamie Lee Winch and Sean Gordon. Here it is, here's the bowl. Just coming in there from Zarani Khalid, holding shot. It's nice to see Sandy here supporting her teammates. The others might be along shortly. Wow, well, they're young, they've probably gone out. <laughs> out for the night. I was just um, chatting to Sandy, and they have really enjoyed the, the whole experience here in New Delhi. It's a, it's a very, in well, let's say it's a very interesting experience. Uh, all sorts of contradictions, but um, I think most uh, people who come here will always remember it. There will be a chapter or two in the memoirs, that's for sure. Sandy, surrounded by Malaysian supporters, but here to support the two English girls. Be a very short Mexican wave if uh, <laughs> Sandy wanted to get into it. Well, I may have to go over and help her out. <laughs> she yes. can stand up, I'll sit down. There will be um, some tension in the commentary position as this match goes on, I'm sure gold medal game. Not a bad from Noor Hashima Ismail. Deflection somewhere, maybe knock out that Malaysian bowl, and that's worked out pretty well for England. That's yeah, pretty. Cool. But with the drawing prowess of Ismail and Monkhouse, there it is, just coming through, getting a off the Malaysian bowl and ro rolled the right way. And you can see. Khalid there is already put a foot out. Uh, Skipper some some extra direction. I don't necessarily know whether it's required every shot though. Momentarily distracted. That seems heavy. I think that's, and unless it takes it, it's going to go close to being in the ditch. It's just, just stop short. Don't know whether we can actually call that. I just think that's best to call. Jamie Monkhouse now has got a bolt to work out of it. And now, Ellen Faulkner is doing the same as 
Zarani Khaled putting her foot there. Gives it's a bit narrow. Needs to find a way through. Was uh, never going to find that passage. One to England. Well, in actual fact, Ellen second. Faulkner is saying two. And it is. Two to England. And so the scores are tied. After getting away to a flyer, Malaysia, with one in the first, three in the second to lead 4-0, and have hit back very well with a pair of twos. I just get the feeling that young Ellen Faulkner is a fierce, fierce competitor. Well, I think that can be taken as, as red. Just looking at their route to this uh, final, these teams, uh, Malaysia certainly had the easier semi-final, winning 11-4, 9-3 against Wales, whereas England had to fight two to beat Australia a half first set and then they won the second set 8-7 so England had a really tough match against Australia a little early on it was a high quality game it's just a little let's run on a little bit that's a good ball and you just don't know how much the mental uh, drain would have been in that match, but if anything's going to lift you, it's going to be playing the game. And they won't need any motivation here tonight. Four ends, four all. Very tight. Yes, the Commonwealth Games is a very important event in the world of lawn bowls, as we've said before. There's uh, no representation no lawn bowls tournament in the Olympics. Of course, there are world championships in lawn bowls, but uh, this is one of the really important sports at the Commonwealth Games itself. That's a great delivery, a little bit of a touch. Yeah, she would have preferred just to uh, sit on the jack, but... And all of a sudden, a little bit of pressure started to be exerted to Malaysia. It's not just a draw of thumb as it was early. England probably hold a couple at the moment. good position with it to try and advance their course but the head is wide open these countries uh, often amongst the medals in the women's section with uh, Zalina Ahmad winning the last two golds in the women's singles. England uh, picked up uh, a number of medals in the pairs in the part of bronze for Amy Gaushaw and Lynn Whitehead in 2002. bronzes in the 80s and early 90s as well as well in the uh, women's pairs
just ducking in. It's great to be able to hear the players calling the shot for their skips and vice the skips for their leads. Struggling to get it up to the jack at the moment. The yeah, the tension's really starting to show, Simon. Even though it's only four ends old. Is now just clearing away. We've got to get a few beetles on the rink at this time of night, and uh, they're hard enough through the back to. Uh, 